Hey everybody, Laura here, bringing you today's chemistry question of the day. Now this question is specific to the HESIA 2 exam. However, it is a really important foundational understanding of the periodic table that will be really helpful for you to know for your T's as well. So I really encourage you to stick around and give this question a shot, even if you're studying for the T's. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also turn on those notifications. That way, every time we drop a new video, whether it be a question of the day or some other helpful tutorial, so you'll never miss a question of the day while getting ready for your test. Also, for more practice questions like these, head over to nursehub.com and sign up for a premium membership so that you can gain access to over 7,500 practice questions, just like this one, fully aligned to the test that you're taking. You can also start by checking out our free practice tests online, also at nursehub.com, to test yourself and see where you are in terms of your mastery of each subject area that you'll be tested on, on either your HESI or your T's. Each diagnostic gives you a full score report that shows you your areas of strength and the areas you definitely wanna spend time studying. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So today's question of the day is, what information does the atomic mass of an atom tell us? Now, if you want to test yourself, you can pause here and see if you can come up with the answer on your own without even looking at the multiple choice answers. I'll also be going over some key pieces of information you can pull from the periodic table. So if you don't want that extra little piece of information before you figure out the answer, you can pause here and see if you can get it on your own. Let's move to a very quick review on what information we can get about elements from using the periodic table. So what do we already know? Well, on the HCA2, most of the time you are not going to have access to a periodic table. We've heard that it depends on your schools that you're applying to, so definitely reach out and check with them. But overall, it seems like you do not have access to a periodic table. What you'll wanna do is definitely look into the most common elements that are referenced in your study guides and your study material. These are elements like carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, chlorine, fluorine, and a few other elements that are they expect you to know. My suggestion is to memorize those first 12 elements. So the elements that go up to atomic number 12. Most of the time, the most important thing that you need to remember if you have to rely on your memory for some of the questions you see is the chemical symbol. So knowing that, for instance, here, C is carbon and the atomic number which for carbon is six. When we do have access to a periodic table or we're looking to confirm our answer choices, there are three pieces of information in each box at, on every periodic table. The first is the chemical symbol, which for carbon is C. This is going to be the letter or letters that represent that particular element. The next thing you're going to see is the atomic number. I'm not gonna tell you what this stands for right at this moment because it would give away the answer to the question. So just pay attention. We have two things on here. We have our atomic number. The other number represents the atomic mass. That's what this question's about. What does this number tell us or represent? Let's look at a few models of atoms to see if that can jog your memory. So here we see a common depiction of an atom we have the nucleus in the middle, and then we have the cloud around the outside. On the inside where you see the plus, those are our protons and the gray spheres are neutrons. Floating around on the outside are the electrons of the atom. Okay, now let's look at our answer choices. So again, what information does the atomic mass of an atom tell us? Does it tell us the number of protons in the atom? Does it tell us the number of electrons and the number of protons in an atom? Does it tell us the number of protons and the number of neutrons in an atom? Or does it tell us the number of neutrons in an atom? Pause here if you need more time to think about it. Ready to check to see if you're correct? Let's go. If you said C, the number of protons and the number of neutrons in the atom, you are correct. Let's walk through this a little bit more. 
So the mass number of an atom or the atomic mass, so sometimes you'll hear it different. You might hear atomic weight, you might hear atomic mass, and you might hear mass number. They all mean the same thing. The easiest way to think about it is that number at the bottom tells us how heavy the atom is. The mass that tells us how heavy it is, the weight that tells it how tells us how heavy it is. So you might see these different terms, and that might be something you want to write down in your notes. That atomic weight, atomic mass, and mass number all refer to that same number at the bottom and are talking about the mass or the weight of one atom of that element. So let's review again. Let's go back to this visual of atomic structure. In the nucleus, we have our protons which have a plus sign because we know our protons have a positive charge. Also found in our nucleus are these gray little spheres, or they're gray in the visual. These are our neutrons, and they have a neutral charge. They do not affect the overall charge of the atom. And finally, floating around outside in the cloud are the electrons. Electrons carry a negative charge. So protons and electrons are really, really important when we're talking about ions or differently charged molecules, differently charged atoms. When there is an imbalance of the number of protons and electrons, that's when you end up with either a positive or negative charge on the atom. The neutrons don't impact that at all. Now, I think these visuals are cool because they kind of show you whenever we're looking at uh, atomic structure and models, they're pretty flat. Uh, and it looks like the electrons kind of circle circle around the atom kind of on a plane, but that's, that's not what it looks like at all. It actually looks more like a cloud, but you can see in this model as well, our protons and our neutrons are in the middle. They are, they make up the nucleus and they are what we measure when we're talking about atomic mass and atomic weight. And then our electrons are floating out uh, and orbiting the nucleus and the atom out in the electron cloud. So let's review the incorrect answers. The first one was the number of protons. That's not the atomic mass, that is the atomic number. So the atomic number at the top here, six, that tells us how many protons are in each atom. This is super important for a lot of different concepts in chemistry and being able to know how many protons a particular atom of an element has. So in the case of carbon, there will always, always, always be six protons in the nucleus. If the number of protons in the nucleus changes, it changes the whole element. So the atomic number is tied to the identity of the element itself. And that's really important to remember. If you change the atomic number, you change the element. Next, the number of electrons and the number of protons. This one is incorrect because the number of no electrons and protons is always going to be equal in a neutrally charged atom. So again, like I talked about a couple minutes ago, our protons and our electrons each carry an opposite charge and their numbers are very important when we're talking about the charge on an atom. Carbon, if it's neutral, it has six protons and six electrons. So the number of these two combined would be 12. This isn't something that's typically asked or that you're required to know in terms of a definition, but it is helpful to understand that the number of electrons will always equal the number of protons if the atom is neutral and does not have a charge. The number of neutrons in an atom is also known as a neutron number and really isn't anything that we have to identify except when we're talking about isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of an element that have differing numbers of neutrons and protons. And what I mean by that is, again, like we said, the atomic number has to stay the same. So for carbon, you're always gonna have six protons. A normal atom of carbon will also only have six neutrons. They're typically equal. When we talk about isotopes, however, that's when, again, proton numbers stay the same, but an isotope of carbon is going to have a different number of neutrons. This is important when we're identifying isotopes or using information about isotopes to answer questions, but this does not affect the atomic mass of a regular atom of carbon. Now, if we were talking about the atomic mass of an isotope, we would have to account for the extra or lacking number of neutrons in the nucleus. And that's today's question of the day. For more questions like this and 
detailed answer explanations for every single question and every single topic that will be, be tested on your HESI chemistry and other HESI sections of the exam, head over to nursehub.com today to sign up for a premium membership and gain access to all those practice questions, as well as five full length practice tests that mimic the actual exam for every single tested subject. You can also check out our newest addition to our library, which you can find under the Prepare for Nursing School tab under your premium prep menu. These courses like time management, test taking strategies, self-care, preparing for class, and many more will give you the foundational skills that you need to be successful in nursing school. See you again tomorrow for the next Nurse Hub question of the day. Happy studying. We know you've got this. Best of luck.